I love lamp. I love table. I love Kyrotech. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. Today we're going to talk about what to farm for the Naboo and the Mandalore stuff because all these new characters are incredibly important but kind of overwhelming, but maybe even more incredibly overwhelming than uh, than important, honestly. And so like, let's kind of sort this out a little bit, shall we? Uh, I think it's fairly important to make good decisions here. Uh, and a uh, huge shout out to the people who have made the best decisions. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, it truly means the world to me. And if you want to support this channel for free, guys, all you got to do is hit that thumbs up button. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, mount the algorithm. It's a good time. It, the, the, the algorithm is going to farm Queen Amidala. You guys you guys didn't realize it, but it totally is. So how did this, co how did this come uh to be like how did this topic uh, occur and it, it comes from me messaging Sarah you guys a lot of you probably actually saw this in the crate expectations episode uh, recently and it was basically saying look at all the stuff I'm doing for the guild this is from my like 11 million account so you know kind of end game but I don't spend much money on that account at all just like the the conquest pack and that's it and, you know it's my alt account so I, I don't I don't have a huge amount of investment and uh, like look at all this stuff want to farm Lord Vader, guys. Like, that's my last Galactic Legend on that account. Would be amazing to be working on it, but instead, I'm working on stuff for the Rise of the Empire, Mandalore node, uh, a bonus, bonus zone, whatever. Uh, also working on the Gungans for the Naboo raid, uh, maybe Stap, eventually, to, for the Naboo raid, and then Queen Amidala and the, her, her Jedi, uh, fellows, fellas, and uh, there's just, there's a ton of investment going on right now. There's a ton. Uh, so how, how do we figure out what things we can, like, skip, frankly? Like, what, what's the most important? And, um, okay, so what are the two things? What does CG say about it? So they announced it. The things with the blue background, folks, are from the forums. These are official things that CG said. Most of them are going to be from that road ahead. So the Naboo Raid and the Mandalore Bonus Node in Rise of the Empire, Territory Battles. Uh, so the, the Mandalore Bonus Node says they don't have the, fi the requirements finalized yet. However, it's going to be Bogaton Mandalore, Dark Trooper Moff Gideon, so Imperial Remnants, and Light Side Mandalorian probably and then maybe Sabine uh, maybe a few other characters but essentially just kind of the latest newest stuff that hap that would happen to, to be part of the whole Mandalore lore uh, the Manda lore and uh, so what are the rewards we don't really know speculation is maybe we'll get like a Reva level kind of character which would I mean that that's amazing and it, it, it increases the value of that node a lot it's going to be on if you look at the map it's almost certainly going to be on a phase four node which means it's all going to be relic eight requirements and if it's not a new character it's probably just like another star or just some like gear some crap you know some some icky goo as the gungans would say and uh so what about the naboo raid uh what characters there's subsets of characters found in these factions so separatists probably my guess would be like separatist droids and maybe newt you know uh jedi uh, probably Galactic Republic Jedi. I'm guessing it's not going to be like Cal Kestis or Jedi Knight Luke. Uh, Galactic Republic, uh, you know, that makes sense. They're that, that happens with the Republic characters. That's going to be the Queen Amidala team. And of course, Gun Guns. Uh, and then if they announced Queen Amidala and the and two new Galactic Republic characters. They didn't say who. We thought it was going to be Panaka or, you know, some, some like cool, you know, like staff characters. But instead, no, it's just going to be an, a, another version of Qui-Gon and Padawan Obi-Wan, which is fine. But, uh, you know, She's going, and then it, it says she will also have solid raid utility. So the focus is going to be, the Gungans are going to be kind of like the Galactic Legend level team, so to speak. It's going to be like the Jabba team from the Crate Raid or the, the Leia team for the, the Endor raid. The Gungans are going to be that, but then probably Queen Amidal is going to have a lot of solid functionality as well. So the time frames of this, the Naboo raid is going to start somewhere in July or August, you know, based on their cadence that they'd already previously announced. After 
or you know every eight to nine months they swap it out and then they they haven't said anything about when the bonus node or bonus zone is going to be coming we just really don't know uh so this is just an attempt we, i don't want to talk about it forever guys just the math of okay when all these characters are released then it's going to take two months after they're released to become farmable because it's going to take a month to go into shipments and then another month to go into some kind of node i'm just assuming a hard node if it's on a cantina node it's faster so it's better so we're just going to get to disregard it but if you look at the shield gungans release it was april 10th if you add two months to it and then if you you can see the math of it if you do five attempts per day uh, which means no refreshes on the node then you can farm a character in six months so it takes like eight months after a character is released to be able to farm these characters on a non-accelerated node uh if, if you want to do 10 attempts per day it's going to take three months if you do 15 attempts per day it takes two months but of course it costs crystals and stuff which we'll acknowledge a little later but if you look at the shield gungan because since it was released latest then uh, you know we you can't probably participate in the raid very well well you can't even unlock jar jar until you've done 15 attempts uh, or 15 attempts until you you have him unlocked at, at you know seven stars and so uh it the if you do 15 attempts a day, you can get there in August, which if the raid starts in August, you're kind of right on time. Um, now, uh, with the with the new characters, well, the one thing that CG has said, one of the few concrete things they said about their release schedule is that the new characters, Qui-Gon and Padawan Obi-Wan, will be there, uh, will be released uh, in the game before the end of the third Queen Amidala Conquest, which the May 27th is going to be when that event ends uh like we'll all everyone who's been getting red crate for queen amidala will get her on monday may 27th so if you look at that just list out every single week after you know so the shield gungan it was released on april 10th and then uh you know if you if you just do every single week listed out you can see there's not many weeks that they could be released and probably it's just going to be one of these jedi probably on the 24th and may 8th or when those two are going to be released uh, for for the Jedi, uh, because that that's how CG has been doing it anyways, every two-ish weeks for their characters, and they don't have many options, honestly, for when they're releasing them. Um, so the Naboo raid uh, is... If you look, if you look at the math for the Jedi, then it kind of pushes it out like January twenty, uh, January, January of twenty twenty-five. If you're just doing the really uh, like low key, uh, you know, just five attempts per day, no refreshes. Uh, uh, but keep in mind that the raid after this will be starting sometime in in about a year from now, April, May, June of twenty twenty. Oh, I said 2024. I mean 2025. Sorry about that. Uh, please don't don't kill me. But um, uh, you know these characters. Essentially, what we're saying is the Jedi are going to take about a month longer to farm because <laughs> they'll be released a month later. It, it's uh, fr fairly obvious. Uh, for Mandalore, uh, we don't know when it's being released. 2024 is the best guess, uh, and everything's already farmable. I mean, it's it's all. It's all non-accelerated nodes. Uh, I get it, but that's they they are farmable right now. Um, and uh, yeah, look at that. I've made it slightly nicer, but apparently we, we're doing uh, two two slides for that. So how, how much how much do this does all this cost? So probably you need your Dark Trooper Moff Gideon team at Relic Eight and the Bogaton Mandalore team at Relic Eight is my guess because the node is going to be Phase Four. And even though you unlock it in Phase Three, probably still going to require Relic Eight is my guess. Just like they require Relic Seven on the Phase Two node to unlock Zepho at Phase Three, you still need Relic Seven, even though the rest of that uh, that phase only requires Relic Six. So my guess is it's just going to be Relic Eight across the board. And, uh, you know, for better or worse, I think that's the direction we're going. For the Naboo raid, uh, we're probably... Uh, what, what do you need? You probably need the Gungans, which includes Jar. Uh, and then you need Queen Amidala and her her men and Stap. I, I'm guessing there he's going to add some functionality. I don't, I don't really know. Like, you don't have to put his Omicron on him or whatever. My guess is 
You, I mean, you already have the team. I think stat is going to kind of a gimme here, folks, honestly, uh, because you already have the team available. My guess is that he's going to enhance the team and be significantly better in that raid. Though, I, you know, we don't know. We don't know what the mechanics are, but that's what it seems like to me. Because remember, Stab did uh, say, uh, uh, they did say Separatists as one of the likely... Uh, characters or, or t character types that that they're going to do okay so um if you want this infographic folks i, I just updated it you can see at the bottom we have the bogaton and the gun guns and we're just kind of comparing you know like all, all these different characters how much investment does it cost you can go and uh, get that for yourself for free on my discord server link is found in the video description you can go there download it share it whatever it's free uh go it's in the infographics channel uh, on the discord server so um if you kind of zoom in though Bogaton and the Gungans, uh, they're, they're kind of, they're close to the same level as, uh, you know, they're, they're not dissimilar to a Galactic Legend level investment. And of course, you're doing, you're farming them on non-accelerated nodes, which I know that's a deal breaker for a lot of people. Uh, but, you know, we got to be aware of what all of this will cost. Um, and, uh, you know, the Kyrotech... Every character these days, 400 Cairo tech. That, that's just that's just how much it costs. That's how it costs. Uh, that that's just what it is. And um, uh, but but what will we get? So it's going to cost a lot. Obviously, uh, the refreshes on crystals too. If you do 15 attempts per day, it costs 75 crystals per day per character, which can add up. I realize I'm not trying to tell you you have to do this, but you know. We, we need to be realistic about these things if we want to get these characters quickly. Um, okay, so what what are you going to get for these? Like, what's the benefit? Like, you're cost, it's costing all this extra, right, to get these characters. And uh, so the, the bonus zone, uh, you're going to get more stuff, which is nice. Like, it's nice if you can do it. Uh, potentially a new amazing character. That's really awesome. These squads are decent. They're not, they're like luxury level characters. They're not amazing. Uh, but but they're, they're fine. Um, the Naboo Raid is probably the most, like, I know I'm a little bit flippant here with by saying monthly gear allowance, but you have to realize, guys, uh, without the raid, without working on the top raid uh, available, like CG's already said, like, you have to do the, the most recent, most important raid, that that's the only way you get your raid tokens, Mark 2 and 3. I Maybe mean, you get some 2 if you do some early, but it, it doesn't matter. Like, the, the level, the Mark 3 is vital. You need your raid. You need to be current on the raid. It is very important, depending on where your guild is at. Maybe you don't need to invest in the max crate kind of stuff if the rest of your guild isn't going to get there as well, because you'll just break your own mind if you do that. Uh, but you need the raid. The raid is incredible important this is probably the most important node frankly I, I don't love it I don't really even enjoy the raid but if we're being realistic it's one of the most important nodes in the game or game modes in the game uh, you get a lot of stuff for it um, and then the squads are probably gonna end up being pretty strong looking at the mechanics on the gun guns I, I really think depending on what Jar Jar does for them it seems like they're going to be around for a while it seems like they have a lot of really interesting mechanics that are gonna counter a lot of different things I don't know for sure obviously and then uh, like, Queen Amidala looks really strong. We don't even know what her two Jedi suitors are going to help her with. Uh, we don't know what they do, but she already looks really strong. And then, of course, there is Staff, which he's going to enhance your, at least your GAC team, if you want to put the Omicron on. I realize that it's a little controversial, but you, he's also going to give you a team that you already mostly have built. He's going to kind of boost that team. Uh, so what should you do? And it depends on two things. As, as always, guys, what do you want? Because this game would suck if we couldn't make our own decisions. And what can your guild even do? And that's probably... Even more important, guys, because just because you want your guild to be good at things doesn't mean that they're going to be good at things. Sometimes they suck at things, in fact, unfortunately. Uh, so if you're just looking at uh, the... I, I just clipped these two these two things from previous slides. Uh, if you look at this from the Naboo raid, uh, just as a really brief recap of, of, you know, a refresher, if you will, of how long it's going to take, gun guns, if you're going to be farming them with at least one refresh a day, then you, you, they can be ready by August or September, so pretty early on in the raid. Queen Amidala's fellas can be ready by September or October, which is still a decent amount of time to be able to use them. Stamp can be ready, like, now, honestly, and... 
uh, that's like the low hanging fruit in my opinion. And I, I know that a lot of people, I've been telling people like, just ignore stab, just to ignore. And I honestly think maybe that's a mistake. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe stab won't be that important. We don't know yet, but I kind of think you should be thinking about farming him. It's kind of a pain. I know that he doesn't seem vital. He might not be a requirement character, but you already have, a lot of people already have that Grievous squad, the Separatist droid squad. And I think that Stap is the guy, eventually you're gonna really want all that signal data from, from Cantina. Maybe you just farm Stap now, knock him out, then you have a squad ready for Naboo. And then once it's time to work on gun guns, once they're actually on nodes, you can start working on them. In my opinion, I think Stap is actually a little bit underrated as a choice. And then uh, for the Rise of the Empire bonus zone, like who's gonna even unlock Mandalore? Like, <laughs> do you need, if you work on unlocking bo it's gonna be a super huge buzzkill if you can only unlock Mandalore, just like how Seer and Cal can unlock Zepho uh, to get there, but you can't really unlock them if you don't have both of those characters. Uh, similarly, what if you go through all that trouble and unlock Bo-Katan, and then you find out that Dark Trooper Moff Gideon is actually required, but you don't have him because you didn't do Conquest or something, and that's, you know, uh, like, that's gonna be a huge buzzkill. Like, we don't know who's gonna unlock Mandalore. That, that's, that's gonna be un a really unfortunate thing for people who just go all out trying to work on Bo-Katan, and then they don't have the, the other squad that they actually need. Um, but you might get a really awesome new character. And uh, the, I guess the biggest question is, is your the rest of your guild gonna be working on your bow, their Bo-Katan unlock or the Dark Trooper Moff Gideon unlock? Because if they're not, if they're gonna work on those teams, if they're not gonna work on getting that node unlocked, then maybe you just shouldn't do it yourself, or maybe you should work on it and move to a guild that actually gives a damn about these things. But uh, uh, the, the teams aren't really worth breaking your neck over right now. Honestly, like they're good. They're I would I would consider them solidly in the luxury phase or category. They're not amazing, and so just on their own merit, I don't think you should be working on Bogotan and all of them. I mean, they're good, but they're luxury. They're things that you get in the very end game. It's an end game pursuit, and I don't think the early account characters should be working on this, frankly. I, um, I, I did make a, a separate Beck slide because I wanted to make sure I got this out because I, I forgot about this. I, I made this after I made the rest of them. Um, I need, so is he worth farming? Here's the thing, guys. Even if you're not working on Bogaton, I think Kelleran Beck should be farmed. I think you should be working on him because, first off, you could use him in the Naboo raid probably as a Galactic Republic Jedi. He's also amazing in Territory Wars, if that's something you're into. And then he's also just a good Jedi in general. And, uh, you know, you need him to unlock Bogaton Mandalore. He's very worthwhile, in my opinion. That That's the one character I would be like, yeah, probably work on him. Like, you can, you can skip... Grogu and Paz if you want for now if that's if that's what you want but I do think Keller and Beck is probably worthwhile so in summary folks endgame guilds are definitely going for the rise of the empire bonus node no question you want that Mandalore thing mid-game guilds should probably focus on it if it's a new good character if it's not then maybe just wait honestly uh, for the Naboo raid I think Stap is the low-hanging fruit as I said I think he's going to be the one that helps you a lot and then gun guns are going to be worthwhile to farm more so than trying to rush the two Jedi that we don't even know the kits for and uh, I think also the gun guns are gonna be a good team for a long time even after the raid is gone we don't know about Queen Amidala probably the same but trying to rush both of them is going to break your crystal supply in my opinion so probably if you're going to rush one of them probably Gungans would be my guess I don't know for sure but I would love to hear what your guys' thoughts are what do you think should be worked on right now in terms of all the new stuff I would love to hear you guys thank you all so much for watching and remember that in all things Zareth prevails <laughs>